Hey guys, I'm Sean McCauley with Cloud Defensive and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be installing the rain switch. So you're going to need your rain mounted up to your gun. You're going to need your remote switch kit and you're going to need some bourbon. I'm just kidding, <laughs> but seriously. Uh, you're also going to need a 7 16th inch socket. So let's dig in. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is talk about the remote switch and the components and kind of get you acclimated to that. So again, we've already mounted up our rain. We've got it assembled here and you've got your remote switch. Uh, just FYI, this is a six inch cable that allows you to mount it pretty much anywhere on the gun relative to your specific need. There's a ton of variants and a ton of ways to go about this. Obviously we can't hit on them all, but we are gonna cover exactly how to do this and we're gonna show you a lot of different options that you do have. So you've got your main switch housing. Within that housing, you've got two buttons. The button with the logo on it is our constant on. And then you've got a smooth button, which is momentary only. So when you go to mount this thing, remember that you can mount it in two different orientations. So personally, I tend to go with my momentary forward. That's my primary button. So I'll always space it accordingly. Uh, but again, you can rotate it and go constant on forward if you want. And then the other parts, you've got your two side plates. So really important here is to note that each of those two side plates has an integrated cable control channel, which we will be using here. And that fits very precisely the cable. So it allows you to house that cable, protect it, and basically enclose it and keep it away from the elements in the rest of the world. And then you've got two uh, hex head screws and the two nuts associated with them. So those are the parts. And then again, you need a 764th driver to actually tighten that down. So install is actually pretty simple in that regard. There's not a lot of pieces. Uh, if there's a challenge that comes with it, it's just because of the kind of the, the orientation of it and figuring out exactly how you want to set up your gun. It's where everybody's different and there's no right or wrong per se, but we're absolutely going to give you some tips here. Uh, one thing to note is this, the cable is a little bit unique in that, like I said, it's six inches long, uh, which is pretty much industry standard. However, it's, uh, a lot stiffer and more robust than the other cables. We did that for two reasons. First of all, we run a lot more power through the system to get the performance. Uh, so the cable just had to be bigger and thicker to be able to handle, handle that much amperage. And it does that wonderfully. Uh, the other hidden benefit here is that it has a very real amount of memory to it, unlike a lot of cables. So once this is positioned, it makes it a little more difficult to install, but once it's positioned, it doesn't move on you. So once we get this installed however you want to install it it's just going to stay in that spot and kind of live there and that's going to make it again a lot more robust what you don't want is you don't want your cable to move on you you don't want it to get snagged uh, whenever that cable flexes and moves it work hardens as the term is and that leads to failures in the cable so again we're doing these things for a reason and uh, that is the explanation behind the cable okay so up next we're going to talk about one of the coolest features uh, with regards to the rain and the remote switch and that's the electrical redundancy that we built into the system. So why did we do this? Well, as a shooter, you absolutely need that. Your life could absolutely depend on it, right? And so the concept here is that if your remote switch dies, your light still needs to work. That's not something that had really been done in the past. So when we set out to, to make this, this system, and specifically the remote, one of the really early things we demanded of ourselves was that we had a system that was capable of working even if it suffered a catastrophic failure. So what we did was we built a momentary switch and a constant on switch into that remote. And then we also built the same feature into the tail cap. So again, if your remote switch or specifically your tail cap switch were to take a catastrophic failure, uh, whether it takes a round or something horrible happens to where this is disabled, if the switch gets severed or anything, the light still works. So next we're actually gonna demonstrate a catastrophic failure and, and prove to you how this is built. So what we're gonna do here, is remove the gun and we've got a rain set up and it works so what we're going to do is we're going to go constant on with the remote switch take a wire cutter this is a little painful she's dead so obviously that would be a catastrophic failure but the light still works okay so we just showed you the redundancy and i got myself a new handheld <laughs> kidding uh time to mount this thing up so what we're going to do 
let's get our gun back on. And this is where it gets a little hairy, but uh, it's always gonna start with where you want your light positioned on your weapon and what mount you chose to use. So most of us are running with our lights farther forward. You'll see that this one's set up exactly how I would run it actually, uh, with the bezel up forward past the handguard. Uh, one thing that I will note, a lot of people ask, is it safe to have the bezel of the light that close to the brake and the muzzle device? The answer is yes. Uh, everything in there is potted. These are absolutely made to live in these environments. Uh, just know that that's safe. So with regards to that, mount your light wherever you want to and orient it on the rail with whatever mount you choose to use. And once that's in place, and once you know where that light goes, then you can start to kind of establish how you're gonna go about mounting this. The next step of the, the equation, at least in my mind's eye, is I have to figure out where I want to put this on the rail, and that's dictated by the ergonomics of the gun, the shooter, uh, lots of different factors come into play there. Uh, in this case, there's no IR system, we don't have backup sights or anything on this gun, so I'm just literally gonna be constrained to wherever I want to put this. So I'm not working around any other systems. Uh, if this was me, that's how I'm gonna be holding that weapon, which means I know that I'm gonna to want to end up mounting it right about there. So, well, that's where we're gonna mount it for the sake of video here, just to demonstrate. And once you establish where you're gonna mount that switch, uh, that's when the work starts. So, a um, couple of things to note here. I won't say there's a, a right and a wrong way to do it, because there's not, there's just a couple of different ways you can go about it. And that will be dictated by the light. So uh, if you are running, for example, and you say that you're gonna run with your remote switch well behind your light, you're not gonna run into any potential interference issues when you go to mount this thing up. I can still get screws in here. I can still do everything I need to do, get my torque driver on there. Uh, I'm not running into to interference issues with the light. So to mount this thing farther forward or adjacent to the light, uh, a little bit more tricky, can absolutely be done. It's designed to be done. But when I go to put this on there, what you're gonna find is that you're gonna potentially run into some clearance issues. So you may have to, once you establish where you want your light, you may have to actually loosen the light or remove it, install your switch in the appropriate place and then reinstall your light. So it's a little tedious, but it's absolutely worth the work. Once you get through that, uh, you're gonna have a system that's set up how you want it. It's gonna be super clean, no exposed cable if we do this right and uh, it's, it's just gonna be the best solution for you. So the next step is to actually demonstrate some different cable control or uh, orientations and explain some of the options here. Some of these are very new. When we created the light control system uh, for the Surefire switches and the Streamlight switches, that was done in a very specific way and your options were kind of limited. Uh, but since we made their switch now, we kind of took away those limitations. So you can do some things with this that you couldn't previously do and uh, I have to teach you how to do that. So what we're gonna do is remove this and just for the sake of demonstration here uh, again so you've got a six inch cable and we're going to mount it in this case up front here but uh, again you can mount it wherever you need to along the length of that rail and when you pick up your side plates again look very carefully here you'll see you've got integrated cable control channels and with those you've got options so those are going to contain excess cable for you and when it comes to mounting this, the first thing we should probably take a look at is actually the nature of the switch. So historically with remote switches, you've had to mount them onto your gun, the cable exits out the back side of that, that switch, and then you have to hook it around and point it forward because 99 times out of 100, we're again forward mounting our lights, right? So most guys are gonna have their light mounted ahead of their switch or best case, even adjacent to it. What you don't want is you don't want your cable coming out the back of your switch, hooking around, coming up here with five or six inches of excess cable. That's a, a snagging hazard. It's a failure waiting to happen, in my opinion. So what we did here is we did a little bit differently. Uh, we built this from the ground up. This is all made right here in this building by us here in southern Indiana. And uh, we just didn't feel constrained to how things had been previously done. So we exit the cable out the bottom and we took advantage of the Picatinny slot. So just to kind of demonstrate that concept, when you're mounting this, all you're gonna do is you're gonna bend your cable over and it's absolutely fine. The way that's, that's engineered allows for that. And you're just going to, wherever you choose to put it on the rail, you're just gonna press it straight down in there. So if you look straight, straight on, you're gonna see that the cable's not pinched. Again, we, we thought about this. And the cable exits out the side, okay? So that allows you to then run your cable forward 
And just to kind of give you a quick demo, you can take one of your side plates and you press it up on there and you'll see that that cable is now contained in that channel. And so theoretically you could run it forward if you were trying to run that way. All right. A uh, couple other options here. So, and this is where it gets a little unique is when you're forward mounting this switch, uh, which is where we're going to mount it here for the sake of demonstration, because again, 14.5 inch build. If this is my gun, I'm going to run and I want my switch farther forward. I've got longer arms. What we're going to do is we're going to come up with a few different ways to route this cable. And again, when it comes out the bottom, you're no longer obligated to go out the same side as the light, which is kind of interesting. Most people aren't ready for that. Uh, so what you can do is you can actually set up your gun this way. You set your remote switch down, you place it, and then you can actually route the cable out the opposite side. Okay. You can route it back. This is the fun part. You can actually cross through the Picatinny channel because again, the cable's tight. Just be patient with it like that. Okay. Uh, and when you put these screws on, I'm sorry here, just trying to demonstrate for you. The clamp actually goes above that. So all you're doing now is you're further protecting this cable. And then in this case, because if this is where we're going to mount it, this is where it gets really crazy. You can actually turn that cable, go back to the front. Okay. And then house this and come exit that cable at that early exit. So in this case, for this setup, a very appropriate thing to do would be to mount it like this. And like I said, it is tedious. So just be a little patient with it. You got to get it in place. Once you are in there, hopefully the camera can see it, but the cable wraps, comes out the opposite side of the weapon, travels back, is going to be contained by this side plate, goes underneath and through that Picatinny slot. And again, you're making these turns over this cable. It's absolutely allowed. There's no, uh, no danger there. Okay. And so now what you've done is you've got very minimal amount of cable and all you'll do is take your side plate on the other side. And I would recommend everybody do this at the beginning before you even think about putting screws to anything, kind of put it together, get your eyes on it, look at it, assess it. I'm a big fan of actually getting your hand on it and make sure you're at the right spot. Cause this is a, uh, tedious enough that you, you just don't want to have to do it again. So, um, you know, always measure twice as they say, get it right. And as you can see, so we've got a six inch cable here that we've contained all but about one inch of that cable. So with that, all we're going to do now is we will insert that cable and we'll show you how to do that here in just a second. Um, but you're not going to want to do that until after you tighten down your mount. Okay. So we've figured out where we want our switch. We figured out our cable management. That's honestly the biggest battle. Uh, the next part is you're going to want to install the two side plates and actually lock this thing down to the rail. So to do that, you're going to take the side with the nut, just let that be for a second. Um, and just to make your life easier, this is just a good tip. What you're going to want to do is take the nut and actually press it in there. So when we design this thing, uh, it's called an interference fit technically, but what you do is you're going to press this down and these nuts are then actually retained in the polymer. Uh, this is a custom glass filled nylon. It's incredibly tough. Uh, and once you press these down in there, just like that, make sure they're all the way seated. Um, if, if you need to, if it's too tight, you can actually tap on it with a, uh, a driver just to seat them. It's not a bad idea. That makes your life easier because you're going to install the screws. You're going to go through the side bracket, through the side plate, through the center section. And then obviously it's going to grab onto that nut and you're going to tighten it down. If the nut is totally seated in there, it just makes your life easier. Typically we don't have enough hands involved in this anyways. That's a good tip. So seat those in there make sure that uh, everything's good and then you can go about your business. So with this particular install, uh, one other thing that's pretty helpful and I actually set this up backwards, so we'll fix it. But uh, I found that if you take the, the side with the nuts, put that on the side as the light. That way, when you go to screw it together, you don't actually have to worry about interference. Sometimes it's inevitable. You could have IR devices on the other side. There's always scenarios. Uh, but anything you can do to make your life easier is a good idea. So what I would recommend is take the nuts, put those on the side as the light. And so all I'm going to do is hook this back in there just to demonstrate that and make sure it's seated. And I'm hoping the camera, I'll kind of pause here for a second. So hopefully the camera can see again, the cable exits here, 
runs out the back, crosses through the Picatinny slot underneath the screw so it's protected, runs up that cable channel, and then exits out. So then we're going to take our other side plate and uh, make sure everything's seated and you will feel some upward tension because that, that switch is going to be pressing up on you a little bit. That's okay. Just press them all together and then all you're going to do is take one of your screws, press that through there, take your driver. Again, it's a 7 64ths and you're just going to screw it together and you will see and feel when that thing grabs. And if it's not lined up perfect, it'll kind of find, find its way there. So I've got it there. And then, so now it's on there. Get my other one. And again, downward force, compress them together. Make sure it's lined up. Just like that. And it's on there. So, uh, with regards to torque, do not over torque this. <laughs> this is a polymer. It's like I said, it's glass filled. It's very, very strong. But if you just over torque it, I mean, we've done this to failure just to, to know the product inside and out. And what happens is if you over torque it, you start to draw that nut back through the plastic and you actually will crack it and break it eventually. Uh, it's very resistant to that, but that doesn't mean you should do it, right? So uh, all you're going to do is torque that down. Officially, you only need about eight inch pounds. I'll tell you right now, you will feel some resistance. And when you see those screws just barely breaking through that nut, that's plenty. That thing is going nowhere. Uh, so she's on there, good to go. And leaves us to one last step. So what we're gonna do now is kind of carefully assess where we want that cable to exit. Again, relative to the rail and the four channels that we've cut into that tail cap body. Um, this is where the cable is stiff. So you will fight it, be prepared to do that. That's okay. Uh, I know that there's concerns about people saying, well, you know, if you bend your cable at too much of an angle, you can create a failure, you know, you could potentially short it or something. That's true. So don't do anything crazy. But what I'll say is this is also something you're not doing every day. The, the issue that people typically have with cables is again, with that work hardening where it just moves all the time. This is a one-time operation, at least in our mind, you're installing your weapon light, you're getting it dialed in, and then you're not touching it. Uh, so I'm not too worried about it. And if you do have an issue, we stand behind our product. We'll just send you a new one. So it's not a big deal. Uh, so to do this right, what we're going to do is assess a little bit. If it feels like it's too tight to get it in there, then what we're going to want to do is loosen the light, install it, and then fold the light back into place. So in this case, I think that's what we're gonna do. Uh, we had not previously put this one together and I think the camera can probably see we've got about an inch of cable there. So uh, what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna grab a tool real fast. I'm gonna loosen this up. We're gonna roll that light outboard, install this, put the tail cap ring on it and then reinstall the light. Okay, so I got the driver for the M-lock screws and I'm doing this from the wrong side of the gun, so bear with me. I don't intend to take it all the way off. You don't need to. In this case, I think we can just loosen it up. And the whole idea here is to deal with the excess cable, tuck it as far back as possible, uh, I should say towards the light. So that way, what we don't want is we don't want the cable hanging outboard back here where something could potentially snag it. We want it to be as contained as possible. And if you sandwich it between the rail and the light body, nothing can touch it. You know, that, that's where it's the safest. So that's what we're going to try to try to achieve here. Uh, so with the light body loose, we've got a little bit of play. We're just going to install it like that. Okay. And then just to make life easy, tail cap ring. Oops. Right, baby. Just like that. And then we're going to push that down. Okay, so actually this is a great opportunity. Uh, so what I just found here is with this mount, you can see how that's starting to pinch just a little bit. I would say that's a little bit excessive. So what we're going to do is just fix that. And the fix there is remove that cartridge we just put in. This is where you take your tool again and we're just going to clock this a little bit more to relieve that. So all we're going to do is put that in and then hopefully the camera sees this. We're going to rotate that down just a little bit. And now when we install this again, just like that, you'll see that angle is a whole lot friendlier. So that is the play. Just like 
that, tucks it right back in there. And then, oops, wrong tool. Just like that. And just like that. So if you look carefully here, you'll see very little cable is exposed. Um, just to highlight that, I'll use my handheld. I don't know if that helps the cameras or not, but you can actually see down in there and that cable is completely protected. You've got zero exposure and I'm not a lefty, but if I was, it's now set up very appropriately for my need. If that switch were to suffer that catastrophic failure that we demonstrated, you can easily roll it inboard, go, you know, constant on with that push button and go back to work. So that is a proper install of a rain remote switch and the cable control involved. Okay, so that completes the video for today. Uh, we explained how to properly install the rain remote switch. We talked about the redundancy involved. There's a lot more to cover. We've got a lot of work to do, so we're gonna get to it. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. Again, like and subscribe and click all the buttons you're supposed to click. We appreciate the support more than you know. And one thing to note here, with relation to this. If you have any questions about install, just let us know. We've got a live chat feature on our website now, so you can actually talk to us in real time. Uh, we're working very, very hard to be the most accessible light company for you. So if you have any questions, let us know. And thanks again for tuning in.